<laughs> Meet Sherman J. Silver, MD. Dr. Silver is a urologist and a microsurgeon. Uh, this is his second visit uh, to the show. He has, uh, he has developed uh, a lot of material and placed it in a book titled The Male, From Infancy to Old Age. He is talking about the male of the species. And contrary to your vote here, I think you stepped forward to say that that's a, everybody believes that, but it isn't true. It's one of society's most cherished myths, really. Uh, just the concept that women have to have a pelvic exam every year and to submit to a pap smear and all the articles and magazines about the complexity of their menstrual cycles has led everybody to really concentrate so much on the woman and to think that really the man's sexual organs and in fact the man's whole sexuality functions very tirelessly and is very simple. And in truth it's very complicated. It's subject to a lot of breakdowns and everybody knows about those breakdowns but they don't get much attention and it often discussing it often leads to a lot of embarrassment uh, and yet it could help a lot of problems if people really knew how the male worked yeah. sexually. Uh, Without charts and without getting too much like uh, anatomy class here, would it be misleading for you to just walk us through uh, your area of urology? First of all, I don't think there's anybody left that doesn't understand that the testicles manufacture sperm. Right. Okay, that's check for me. All right, that's one for one. <laughs> now, from here on out, it gets much more complicated. Right. If the testicles manufacture the sperm, they do not provide the ejaculate, is that right? That's absolutely right. The ejaculate comes from? The ejaculate comes from the prostate gland. Now, the prostate gland is a pain in the neck to all men as they get older. You know, they, they find that they have a harder time urinating, they could no longer write their name in the snow, you know, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> like they could when they were little, little boys. Yes. Yes. Um, Why, because the PSI is not what it was. Yeah, but see, it? the prostate gland sits right at the base of your bladder, just like a donut, and you urinate through it. It provides all the secretions of the ejaculate. The testicles don't provide the secretions or the fluid. The testicles just provide the sperm and the fluid comes from this prostate gland. And as you get older, it gets bigger. It's just normal. All, it happens to all men. And every year that donut gets bigger, the donut hole gets smaller, and they have a difficult time urinating. So as the donut gets bigger, it impinges on the urethra, is that it? That's right, and it's hard to urinate. And the ejaculate volume goes down. In other words, the amount of fluid that comes out gets a little bit smaller. And, uh, in fact, m men are in a constant state of deterioration from the age of 18 yes. onwards. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, you don't have to applaud it. Uh, okay. Now, just, let, here's the thing that knocks me out. Um, the urethra obviously carries the uh, urine from the bladder for uh, when you expel it. But the urethra also carries the ejaculate from the prostate. Right. It wouldn't be a good idea for those two things to get mixed up. So nature has a really complicated system of opening and closing valves. Yeah. So in other words, from below we're getting the goldfish. Right. From above we're getting the water. Right. And at orgasm, it all has to happen at the same time. Exactly. And uh, the, uh, the actual, the neck of the bladder contracts uh, with tremendous spasm around the time of orgasm. That's to keep the urine from coming out, to keep the water from coming out. And at the same time, the sperm which have been milked up during the foreplay and during intercourse preceding ejaculation are sitting right near the prostate gland now, the so-called ejaculatory mm -hmm. ducts. And then finally two things occur during orgasm. First the man has this what's called a sense of ejaculatory inevitability. That's not a, just a psychological phenomenon. The, uh, the ducts around his prostate gland are contracting then. And he doesn't get a tremendously powerful sensation from this, but he knows something is happening. And that's when the sperm and the ejaculate are being mixed together and literally propelled into this, into the donut hole where the prostate sits. And then at the moment, and then suddenly the sphincter, which normally keeps urine from coming out beyond the prostate gland, opens up and these very powerful muscles, which by the way are the same muscles that women have, the bulbocavernosus cavernosis muscles, contract, and that's when the ejaculate gets squirted out at really tremendous force. And at the same time, something is happening to close the valve from the bladder so that no urine escapes. Exactly. This is the most complicated thing I ever heard in my life. It, I it's mean, a symphony. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> does it... Um, <laughs> you know, the, here's, here's the thing. Now, I, I'm really four square for information. I, I think we've made that point more than one occasion on this program. The truth shall make you free, and there's no question a lot of people are walking around who, are, who have the ability to know a lot of stuff and, and aren't trying to learn. But I guess I'm, 
when you when you know it that well, does it ever get in the way of the candlelight and wine? You know what I mean? Uh, you know what I mean? Is it possible that the emotional feature of erotica could be somehow diminished by all by just the knowledge of all these things happening? At I don't time? think so. It, it seems that knowledge about what's going on can just make things easier for you because a complicated symphony like this isn't going to go right all the time, you know. And uh, if you understand what's going on, you can really have men in, in our society have been told not to think about it not to worry about it and that's going to make everything okay but the plain fact is every with every decade it takes them longer to get an erection uh and it takes and, and it takes them longer to have orgasm which can actually be a benefit but they don't realize that they're looking at it as though something is happening that's deteriorating and they really are deteriorating it's a benefit because it doesn't the women it's uh... it allows time for a real communication between man and woman and uh, it's not a matter of the 18-year-old boy who, in 10 seconds, it's all over. Uh, he, as he's getting older, because of his physical deterioration, and this is inevitable, every 10 years there's a decline, it can actually lead to a, a prolonged intercourse, which, if he's not fearful that something is wrong, can improve the sexual relationship. But it takes longer for him to get an erection. It takes longer after orgasm for him to get another erection. And a man senses this deterioration, and one night for sure he's just not going to be able to get an erection. He might be 20, he might be 30, he might be 40. And this is normal for almost every man to have a night like that. And it's usually been a lot of pressure on them. He's perhaps thinking about whether he can perform rather than thinking about communicating. And that can really scare the death out of him like it's all over. But if he understands what's really happening to him physically, and it shouldn't be a problem. The most common cause of impotence, you say, is fear of failure. That's right. So yeah. that uh, you would like to give all men permission not to have to create the 4th of July every night, then. Is that your point? Absolutely. And, and if, that, if they don't do that, it's normal. If they recognize they're not Superman, and that when they're, when they're 32, they're not the same man they were when they were 18, and that that has its benefits, then they can deal with the impotence, and indeed, it's, it's a self-cure. Uh, we want to show you a film now. I guess uh, this is a film that we are about to take a trip through the inside of the penis. <laughs> <laughs> but now before you get crazy, <laughs> before you get crazy, this is a very instructive film. It's okay to laugh. This is America. It's okay. <laughs> you know, it's even okay to call the sponsors. This, this is America. Boycotts are legal. But I don't, I don't think... I don't think that you'll be moved to do that once you see the point here that uh, Dr. Silver will make. Right. As we, uh, you here in the studio can see the uh, monitors. And uh, Look, roll film. You want to set it up? Yeah, I'd just you... like oh, to say right. for a second that you, oh, here you can see a trip through the penis. And if you look closely, that little lump there you can see on the floor is actually the vestige of a vagina and uterus. The prostate glands are those big lumps on the side. And just on the floor, in front of the prostate, this little lump is the man's vagina and uterus. And all men have the vestige of a vagina and uterus inside their penis down by the prostate gland. Representing, you can see a closer look now, there is, right on the floor, that little lump is his tiny little vagina and, and uterus that was just between the lobes of the prostate gland. Now, the thing that we got to realize is that when we're six weeks old fetuses in our mother's womb, uh, men and women, boys and girls, look exactly the same. And, in fact, when we grow up, uh, men, all men have female organs and all females have male organs. It's, the only difference is a matter of size, in a, in a, in a huge sense. Are you calling the clitoris, then, the penis clitoris, uh, symbol it, of, the of the female? It's not just a symbol. It is, uh, the clitoris is the penis, or if you're offended by that, the penis is the clitoris. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But, but I'm going to decide which upsets me the most. 